a circular flat panel LED light. These lights are they are very flat and they're designed to go into false ceilings and you put these clips in at the side which are a real finger masher but once you get them in they basically they fold up like that. You push it up and then they spring down and they hold the light in place just like a standard downlighter really. But these are quite interesting because they really are very high output and they're very flat so I'll just plug this in. It's got an electronic driver with it. And this one came rated as 15 watts and it draws about 13 watts. And it's very bright. I mean, it really is designed for illuminating things. It is really intensely bright. Um, and it's a very even illumination in the surface, as you can probably see. The camera is showing a slight hot spot at the edge. But yeah, I can see that with the human eye. But you know, it's overall, it's really not bad for the um, illumination. And uh, the power supply, I'll just unplug that now because it's a wee bit ferocious. The power supply uh, says 12 to 18 watt uh, universal voltage, output DC 36 to 72 volts at 280 milliamps. So um, that's interesting. It plugs in with one of these standard jack type connectors, which means that if this was left out, this would have up to certain. This open circuit would have had about 72 volts in it, which is a bit. Yeah, that's all right though. Let's uh, take a look inside. It feels quite heavy. It feels like it's a. Uh, I think this has got heat sink fins. I think this might be aluminium. Lots of screws. Came with a wee skid mark on it. Initially, when I took it out of the box, I thought that was a crack, but that, that, this is actually metal. And it's just a wee scratch. I think someone may have had an incident while they were putting a screw in. I'm saving that one to last because just looking at it, it looks all wonky and stretched, stripped. Uh, Oh right, it's a, a screw with the cross in the screw is actually way off centre. It's obviously the machines had a burp while that's been going through. So these are very, very common in eBay. I put in a, a bid on an auction one because I didn't really fancy paying the full price and got lucky and got this one for about £5, which was uh, very good. <clears throat> well worth it for taking to bits. So there's a metal cover. bit of foam to hold everything down, a plastic reflector. Ah. There's a panel like, oops, there's multiple layers actually. This panel has a matrix of dots on it. And this is a common technique used for spreading lights on edge lit panels in, um, <clears throat> in computer displays like laptop displays. And uh, it's basically, the, the illumination comes from the edge and it's etched possibly by laser and the dots in it are actually spaced quite far apart at the edge but they get progressively closer the sooner, the further they get into the middle. And this means that the light is spread evenly because as the light reduces intensity there are more dots which are projecting it forwards and on the opposite, where it's close to the edge there are, just, there are less dots which means less light actually gets put out there but it's brighter there anyway. As, um, so that's quite a neat approach. Uh, do I have anything I can shine across this to actually... Show up. Let's uh, take a look and see if we can find something. <clears throat> so let's uh, turn the light off and I shall try shining a torch across it. How does that show up? It actually almost it looks like it stops dead centre, doesn't it? It's quite odd. It looks very linear, doesn't it, the way that uh, light shines across. And yet, if it was shone across that, it would taper off. But as it goes through this one, it, uh, d it does kind of spread it about and make it more linear. That's quite interesting. So, um, I'll put the lights back on. Um, it's lit from the edge. There's another layer under there as well. It's got a final diffusing layer. 
and then at what looks like an ordinary strip of the LEDs um, surrounding the, the edge. Let's plug that in. Oh, there's a dead LED. That's quite annoying. Hmm. So what voltage am I going to get across that? Let's actually see what voltage it's putting out. That will be a DC voltage. So not have a terrible instant here. 47 volts. Okay. Now, the LEDs, now 47, if you add up the number of LEDs, I'm not sure how many they are, but each LED is 3 volts, so I don't think they're all in series. Um, I wonder if they're in clumps that are in a multiple. 47 volts uh, would mean roughly about 47, say roughly divided by 3, was that 47? Equals about 15... That would be the equivalent of 15 LEDs, and really, that's uh, it's obvious there's a lot more than that. Um, so I'll just disconnect this again. And I'll get a meter. Let's, uh, let's just use the fluke for this. So set it to continuity. And I'll touch this to the negative one. The negative is going to there. Is it going to there as well? Yes, it is. It's going to all these LEDs. Okay, it went to five LEDs. Oh, I can see them all actually glowing in continuity, though, all five of them. Which means that if I probably go across the next set of five as well, yep, they're all glowing as well. So they're in, in parallel multiples of five. Um, and that must be about 15 multiples of five all the way around. I would guess. I'm not 100% sure how many LEDs there are in it. The LEDs are on that normal sticky tape that you you normally buy the strips of LEDs, but it seems quite narrow. I don't know if that's normal or not. And I will say that if this is supposed to be heat sinking it, then there are places that the tape has not stuck to. They've obviously, as they've put it round, it's, they've pulled it taut and it's pulled away. So that's not going to provide good heat sinking at that point. I'm not sure how that's going to affect it. I don't know if it can actually spread the heat along that. Um, the dead LED might be very typical of when you win something in auction, they're a wee bit miffed, they send you a duffer, but that's fine by me because uh, I'm quite happy to uh, get slight duffers if, I, if it's going to get taken to bits anyway. But that means the other LEDs would be put under strain. I can see that LED there is way wonky, it's been put on way squint on there. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So, it's the diffusion layer, the light spreader layer, and then the um, reflector at the back that, that diffuses that, and then the metal plate to hold it all in. Okay, what about the power supply? Let's disconnect the power supply from my little jury rig connector. Get that out of the way. Screwdrivers don't make the best crowbars, but they're good enough. Ooh, that's really not want to go. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. Right, what we got? <coughs> the chip there, I'm just going to short these capacitors out because they look quite beefy. Oh, those capacitors in parallel. So we've got a uh, 15 microfarad 400 volt in parallel with a 10 microfarad 400 volt, so that's 25 microfarad at 400 volts. 
There's what looks like a little inline resistor here, as maybe as a fuse. Which, uh, there's a bridge rectifier under here. Um, and if that resistor is a fuse, then this live wire was supposed to be soldered there. And that resistor is not even in circuit by the look of it. I can't see a track connected there at all. That must have been where the wire was supposed to go. So they've accidentally bypassed the fuse protection. It bit direct fire with the isolating slot there, which is good. The chip is a it's a BP chip. Hold on. Let's see if I can just magnify that up with this little ruler magnifier. It looks like a bright power chip. BP3126. BP3126. I'll just note that down. BP3126. And the circuitry associated with it looks very reminiscent of the standard um, bright power LED drivers used commonly in the LED the LED GU10s. There's the rectifier diode in the output and the smoothing capacitor on the output, which is 100 megfarad at oh where is it? It's a uh, completely unreadable. 100 volts is it? I think it's 100 volts. Yes, it is 100 volts. Yeah, interesting. I think uh, I think this calls for further experimentation. One moment, please. Okay, well, there's a bit of experimentation later. I've got one of my little RGB controllers, and I've put some very simple RGB tape around it. It's not the stuff with the 50-50 chips. It's the one with the alternate red, green, blue, because it's the only one that was thin enough to actually fit. And I'll turn this light off now, and you'll see that although you get the slight patterning of the LEDs from the edge, and a slight blob here where they didn't quite line up, yet it didn't come up at an exact multiple, it does spread the light pretty well for the um, colours. Um, You'll also notice uh, this is running my software at the moment, and you'll notice uh, it's not as obviously going to show up in a, the iPad because it'll probably be trying to compensate the colour and, and make it make it white as the iPad seems to do. But um, the uh, colours here are being generated by an eight million bit randomizer, and they're being selected from the full sixteen million palette that you can get from the two hundred fifty six intensity levels in red, green, and blue. And it just never repeats. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. These that's quite uh, good colours. And looking at this, the colour mixing is very good in the centre. But you do, of course, see the points of light coming from the edge because you know they're they're this far apart. The light sources, and that's why you're getting a slight colour stirring. But it still looks quite nice. Um, any of you who's into Disney. Um, and knows who the Spectrum men are, may actually recognise this pattern as being the head piece of the Spectrum in colour pattern because it's the same software. And in fact, it's the same controller that's running that. So, um, what I've got here, I've put this as a weight, I've really just got the um, LED tape just sitting round the outside of that, and I'm going to change that now. I'm going to change it for a bit of generic white tape. So I'll put this to the side. Uh, now all I have to do is find a bit of the generic white tape. There it is. And I'll connect that up to the 12 volt supply so it runs at full brightness. And this is just the low power 12 volt white tape with uh, three LEDs in series per section. It's not going to be anywhere near the power of these ones because these are just ordinary LEDs. But if I wrap this round I don't think the height's 100% perfect, because theoretically this has to fire down the exact side of that plastic. But uh, if I unplug the overhead light now, and try and line that up without shorting it out, um, it should pretty much illuminate that. Well, you can actually see the effect that as the because the tape's uh, not sitting perfectly flush, when it moves up, it, it, the light pattern moves about. But again, if the edge is covered, hidden with this ring, then you get a fairly even illumination in the middle. And that would be quite good for decorative use. So technically speaking, you could get one of these lights if it failed. You could take the um, 
take the existing high power tape out the inside, put in a section of this really common stuff on eBay. Hold on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna compare it side by side with what's actually in the unit. Let's uh, tip this up. So there's the existing LEDs. Uh, it's pretty close. I'm not sure if it's 100% perfect. But it's close enough I think it would have the effect that if you actually stuck some of this tape around the inside then just ran it off 12 volts, you could run the panel at a sort of reduced intensity. And that would open up the possibility of quite easy uh, dimming control using standard pulsed modulation controllers. Oh, I've just pulled one of the wires off, not to worry about that. I get the feeling I may actually be stripping this out to modify it anyway, since it was just bought as a novelty, and because it's clearly got a dead LED. Oh, the driver. Um, it turns out this is just very much like the BP Bright Power driver for the um, standard um, GU10 3W LED floodlights. It's got the chip, uh, the incoming rectifier, the cap smoothing capacitor, and then it's, this is the like the older style of the, the like a bit like the BP three one oh two two one oh three I think it was two one oh hold on two oh one three maybe oh god I can never remember two thousand and thirteen three one oh two BP three one oh two um which was very similar to this but just designed for much lower power. And basically speaking, you've got the transformer, you've got the primary winding with this as a snubber across it to actually prevent the uh, high voltage spikes damaging the uh, the switching MOSFET here. And it's got a feedback winding, which is not just used to monitor the actual uh, saturation of the core as such, but it's also used to power the circuit so that when you power it on initially, uh, this capacitor charges through this resistor until the voltage on the chip is enough to actually kick start it. And that capacitor just get enough power to keep running for a few cycles. <clears throat> but as soon as that happens and it starts, back, uh, it starts driving the transformer, the feedback winding also feeds through this diode onto that and then it powers, it acts as a power supply for the chip as well. And meanwhile, the drain, the current is sensed by this uh, um, current sense resistor here. And you can see that it's got a comparator here where the drain current is uh, being switched through the... the current from the winding is being switched through the MOSFET. Then it's going down via that sense resistor to ground. And this measures the voltage across that. It's got a 500 millivolt reference. As soon as the voltage across that sense resistor in series with the primary winding goes above about half a volt, um, it automatically turns off to... Uh, because that's like the you can program the maximum current in the primary winding. And then that's pretty much, because it's basically a winding to winding transformer, you then get a fairly accurate current control of the secretary with just a diode and a capacitor. It's very, their, their chips are really quite amazing, uh, bright powers. Unfortunately, most of the data sheets are in Chinese. Fortunately, you can more or less work it out from the pinouts and, uh, and information on them. But yeah, this is quite an interesting light. Uh, decision, decisions. I don't think I've got a use for it here, but it's quite nice to take to bits. I might use it as an illuminated panel. I might just solder that on and see if I can find out why that LED was duff and if it can be changed. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. It's well worth, well worth buying and taking to bits.